Why do we always forget names of main characters in our fucking books that we love and that I literally just finished like last week? Wow. It is August 1st. <laughs> Tears are already coming. It is August 1st. And in 19 days, I'm leaving for Taipei, Taiwan. And, um... As you can tell, the realization is, um, is arriving right now. <laughs> I am just like, fuck, like realizing I'm not gonna see the people whom I care about the most for a really long time. <sighs> I know I still have like 19 days, but it feels like it's gonna be over like a second before I leave. And I'm so scared and I'm so excited. <laughs> it's like so so many mixed emotions it's crazy bye bye Ooh, ik besef het nog steeds niet ik besef het nog steeds niet kijk eens madame mijn helper ja toch doe ik Cambridge slaan dat ik hier gewoon een half jaar niet ga zijn ik weet niet wat ik ervan vind yay we're so happy <laughs> I am in Taipei. <laughs> I have been in Taipei for four days now, I think. It has been some getting used to, but I feel like I'm doing really, really well. I thought I was gonna have massive culture shock and it's definitely a different culture from the Netherlands. But the Taiwanese people are so extremely kind. The food tastes amazing. It's really, really cheap in comparison to the Netherlands. So I'm sure that I will pretty much not cook for the rest of my stay here. And I've already tried so many amazing dishes and snacks that I have never heard of or seen or tasted before. So it's all very exciting. Lots of different new things are happening. But yeah, so this is my dorm. Um, it's really like a huge mess right now. So I don't really want to give you a tour right now. It's really quite big. It's quite clean. It's not very cozy yet. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to head out for Ikea to also grab some normal stuff that you need like towels. I don't have any towels here. I don't have toilet paper here, which you cannot necessarily get at Ikea, but you get the point. Plus I need to buy an extra mattress because I bought one here, but it's so thin. I know it's probably supposed to be better for your back, but I want to sleep comfortably here. So maybe next weekend I'm going to go there as well and get like a cute little carpet because the floor, it, they're tiles, which is fine, but it's not really cozy looking. And I want to hang some photos and cards of all of my friends that they gifted me. But I'm honestly like so happy and really, really proud of myself for how well I'm doing so far. I know that for a lot of people, these things are easy peasy lemon squeezy, but I am not a lot of people. <laughs> I am a sensitive girl. I'm just really proud. Um, but for now, let's go to Ikea and get some stuff and then I'll talk to you later. <laughs> like a breakfast lunch at like this it's apparently like a chain kind of restaurant in taiwan i think we barely spent 
two euros and 80 cents each and we tried so many things off of the menu which i absolutely adore doing but yesterday i bought some double-sided tape and i brought like so many cards and photos of friends and i mean my walls are still really freaking empty so let's change that shall we I was listening to the new sabrina carpenter album because i am slightly if not pretty obsessed with it <laughs> It is so rainy. <laughs> Didn't bring an umbrella. Bought one from a random guy on the streets because I still refuse to accept the rain. Like shit. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to accept it. With little strands of hair in my face. Doing a hike right now. Oh, so pretty. We're gonna go to Yongshang Waterfall, if I'm correct. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh God, I'm, I'm no. <laughs> no way. Uh, little excited dance. Wait. You whip up my appetite. Don't leave me here. Okay, <laughs> let me give you a little reading update. Oh my gosh, I look so tired. I don't know if this will help. <laughs> okay, so I have my e-reader with me. I have an e-reader now. And look at these fucking cute stickers. Okay, they're all made by my friends. This one's made by Leora. This one's made by Daphne from Daphne in the Trees, or Daphne in the Trees. And then this one is also made by Daphne, and this one is made by Myrte from Sunflower Winters. I'm obsessed. Um, I got this e-reader as a gift for my friends for my 25th birthday in preparation for moving to Taiwan. And I have a Kobo. You can also see my current read. But until so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. It is very heavy with the case that I bought though. It's much lighter when I just like take it out. But let me give you a little reading update because it is due. It is due. Um, I have to say semi-unrelated, it's so difficult to really feel the autumn vibes here in Taiwan because it's like 30 degrees Celsius. So I'm still in my summer era, kind of actually. And I know that's not what book two wants right now. I am sorry, but I'm trying to transition into autumn. So my, my autumn transitional book was this one and I absolutely adored it. Ah. I don't know why I made that sound. Maybe because I think this book is holy. It was that good. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Uh, you guys know the type of romance authors that I love. I love Emily Henry, Talia Hibbert. I love Abby Jimenez. And so many of you guys have always recommended an Ashley Poston book to me. And I have this one on my e-reader and it was the main reason I think why I loved it so much is because cooking is a huge element in this book and I miss my cooking here so much. So the seven year slip is about our main character. I don't even, why do we always forget names of main characters in our fucking books that we love and that I literally just finished like last week? Um, wow. Well, let's just get on with it. So our main character, she inherits the apartment from her aunt who has just like semi recently passed away. It's a beautiful historical magic magical apartment in New York City. And what makes this apartment magical is that at the moment when you least expect it, but when you are definitely at like a turmoil, turmoil, like at a turning point in your life, the apartment sends you either seven years in the past or seven years in the future. And her aunt has always said to our main character, like there's two rules about this apartment. You always take off your shoes and you never fall in love here. And what surprised me a lot about this book is that actually I think the biggest theme of this romance novel is grief because our main character is still dealing with the aftermath of her aunt's death and like how much she meant to her and like Ashley Pawson, I believe if I was correct, was currently dealing with a big moment of grief whilst writing this book. So I think, you know, grief looks different for everyone, but I think Ashley Poston dealt with it in such a beautiful way in her book and our love interest, we get introduced to him through the magic in the apartment, of course. He is a chef. 
he loves cooking and I just loved seeing that element being incorporated into this book. It's like one, it's like two of my biggest passions coming together in this book, reading and cooking. So that's why I loved it so much. And it definitely had a lot of the psychological elements in it that I always want to have in my romance books. So I am so excited to read more Ashley Pawson. Like my spark for reading has been reignited again. But after that, I really wanted to try and see if I could get into the autumn fall spirit whilst I'm in a country where it is 30 fucking degrees and the sun mostly always shines. Right now it's, it's, it's super cloudy, so I'm trying to get into the autumn spirit. So I read the first 10% of a thriller. I will continue on with the thriller at some point, but right now I want to be into like that whimsical vibe and Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister wasn't gonna bring me into that happy fairy tale vibe, but this one intrigues me so much because it also has like a time changing element. I don't know if that's the correct way to phrase it, but our main character, she's a mom and her son gets home past his curfew. She's already like super, super worried. But when she sees him arriving at home, she looks out the window and she sees her son stabbing someone. And she's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wouldn't we all be like that? And basically the police come, she even like tries to save the victim. It doesn't work out. So she's like in such a big panic. And then when she wakes up the next morning, the murder hasn't happened yet. And I believe she's going back in time and trying to figure out why did my son stab this random person on the streets? Like what the hell is going on? And she's trying to prevent the murder from happening, which I just, I love. I love a time element, like a time tweaking element. I think that's just like so cool, but it was giving more like obviously like thriller vibes and I, felt like that wasn't really what I wanted. So as you saw, I was reading another book. I am about a fifth of the way through Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. And I was really unsure of whether I was gonna like this book because some of my friends, and maybe you guys have noticed that I like books with high stakes. I like books to keep me on the edge of my seats, either through the plot or through psychological themes. Like I need something tense to be going on. And this book is everything but but tens so far. So we follow Emily Wilde and she is a scholar in Fae. So that's what I think is super interesting about this book because it both reads, well, I spit literally everywhere. It both reads as just a fiction novel, but also as if you're reading a research paper on fairies. Like there's footnotes, there's like other scholars that are being talked about. It's very much like deals with the academic world, but then in Fae. And Emily Wilde is being sent away for her studies to this country up north and she's gonna study a species of fae that has not been studied before or that like very little is known about and it's a very slow moving novel until so far nothing much has happened i'm about a fifth of the way through and she has met a fairy and she's trying to incorporate herself into the village life where she is staying and the people are quite a bit hostile against her i think there's a lot of like apprehension in the village about whether fae like actually exist but i'm really enjoying the dynamic between her and the characters and her like descriptions of the lands that she's exploring and she's like very much like on her own little journey which i think is so cool because i'm on my own little journey here blah 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 <laughs> i don't know the first name of like kind of the scholar who she is working together with but his last name is bamblebee and emily has her suspicions about bamblebee that he might also be a fairy so that's really cool i i'm yeah i'm having a good time it is slow moving though so i'm also it's also taking me a little while to push on with it, but that's my little reading update of what I've been reading so far and uh, what I think of Emily Wilde. So, yep. <laughs> so I'm with Connie. How do you pronounce this dish? It's called Logan. And it is a um, meatball? Yes, meatball. And it has like a gelatinous coating or what is it like rice flour or? No, you know, actually ingredient is made by pork. We can cut it. It's jelly, jelly, jelly. Yeah, <laughs> jelly. I'm trying to okay. cut it open, but it's like, it's a bit <laughs> difficult. If you have big mouth, you can try, you can have a challenge. Everything. Yeah. Okay, I think I have a good piece. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Hot, hot, hot. Mm. Mm. You like it? 
Mm. Oh my god, you guys, my first month in Taipei has already ended. And I've already visited so many beautiful places, not only by myself, but also with the friends that I've been making here that I'm already so, so grateful for. I couldn't have wished for a more smoother transition into this whole new country. Please don't doubt your decision. It's gonna be amazing, I promise you. And if I promise that, then anyone can make a wonderful time everywhere in the world. Just a casual Friday. Just a casual Friday. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I'll hopefully get to get to do that. Like, how fucking cool is that? <laughs>